From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Monday, July 11th, 2022. China tries to censor what could be the biggest data hack in history. Chinese censors are working overtime to clamp down on news that the data they've siphoned from their citizens over the years is apparently out there and for sale. This is a follow-up to the story we covered last week in which a hacker, only identified as China Dan, announced they had acquired data on 1 billion Chinese citizens. The Financial Times has written that Weibo, essentially China's version of Twitter, and WeChat were already censoring any mention of hashtags containing data leak or database breach. Censors blocked existing posts and even reportedly asked at least one poster with a big follower base to come in for questioning. We will pay you if you can find a way to hack us, says Pentagon. The U.S. Department of Defense has created a broad but short bug bounty program for reports of vulnerabilities in public-facing systems and applications. The Hack US or Hack Us program kicked off on Independence Day and is scheduled to run through to today, July 11th, with reward totals reflected by the severity of the flaws. The DoD has allocated up to $110,000 for the exploit hunt. Vulnerability spots can bring in $500 or more for high-severity flaws, and critical holes are worth at least $1,000, with as much as $5,000 set aside for particular awards, such as for the best finding for .army or .mil addresses. The initiative is being run with bug bounty platform maker HackerOne, which teamed up with the DoD to operate a 12-month pilot program that ended in April. Tech's red-hot hiring spree shows signs of cooling. The tech industry's ultra-rapid hiring during the pandemic is showing signs of cooling off and a number of top executives are preparing for it to get worse. With a fear of recession looming, executives from high-profile tech companies have announced plans to slow hiring or cut jobs and are, in some cases, warning employees to brace themselves for tougher times ahead. Although the overall labor market remains tight, with strong demand for workers in some sectors and positions, warnings from some tech leaders heightened fears of a tough stretch ahead for a sector whose influence and power touches virtually every aspect of society. Twitter, Tesla, Snap, Netflix, Amazon, Meta, Coinbase and Robinhood are some of the high-profile names who have made cuts or announcements of cuts recently. Maastricht University wound up earning money from its ransomware attack. The Dutch University was hit with Klopp ransomware in December of 2019, which had been deployed through a phishing email scam. The university decided to pay the 30 Bitcoin ransom, which was equal to roughly 200,000 euros, in order to avoid delaying exams and losing all its research, educational and staff data. However, since the Netherlands Public Prosecution Service later traced and seized a wallet containing the ransom still held as Bitcoin, their value had grown to approximately 500,000 euros. The university executive board said it wants to use the money to create a fund that would allow the university to help students in need. Thanks to today's episode's sponsor, EdgeScan. EdgeScan simplifies vulnerability management by delivering a single full-stack SaaS solution integrated with world-class security professionals. Instead of managing a plethora of point scanning tools for each layer of the attack surface and squandering precious staff resources manually removing false positives, EdgeScan offers automated and accurate contextualized alerts across the entire attack surface into a single source of truth. For more information, visit edgescan.com. That's E-D-G-E-S-C-A-N dot com. Rogers CEO apologizes for massive service outage in Canada and blames maintenance update. The outage at Rogers Communications that shut down mobile and internet services across much of Canada on Friday was not a cyber attack, but was instead what Rogers President and CEO Tony Staffieri described as, quote, a network system failure following a maintenance update in our core network, which caused some of our routers to malfunction, end quote. With many businesses, government agencies and parts of the 911 emergency service rendered powerless during the 15-hour outage, experts are calling this, quote, a learning opportunity for threat actors such as Russian state-sponsored hackers who can now see how vulnerable Canadian industry, financial institutions and healthcare systems are to an attack on a telecom provider, end quote. Medical debt collection firm says ransomware attack exposed information on over 650 healthcare organizations. 
In a statement issued last week, professional finance company PFC said that during the February attack, the Quantum Ransomware Group used the Bumblebee malware loader to gain access to databases that held names, addresses, accounts receivable balances, information regarding payments made to accounts, dates of birth, social security numbers and health insurance data and medical treatment information. Its role as a debt collection firm means healthcare organizations provide the company with information on patients or customers who have not paid, making them an ideal target for hackers. PFC said it notified the 657 companies in May. Last week in Ransomware... Earlier last week, the Astra Locker Ransomware Group decided to shut down and release its decryptors after receiving attention from researchers. These decryptors allowed MSYSOFT to release their own decryptor. Two new enterprise targeting ransomware operations appeared last week, one called Red Alert, the other Omega, both of which performed double extortion attacks. Checkmate is a new ransomware targeting QNAP devices but not stealing any data. And in addition to the just-mentioned quantum attack on PFC, the US government is warning about the Maui ransomware that is targeting healthcare. Pentester said he broke into data center via hidden route, running behind the toilets. Noted security consultant Andrew Tierney, who works for security services outfit Pentest Partners, revealed on Twitter how he managed to gain unauthorized access to a data center when he discovered that the toilet facilities for an unnamed client's general office space and the secure area where the IT infrastructure is housed had a shared access space for servicing both sets of facilities. Flushed with his success, Tierney noted that he had just managed to defeat the data center's security protection, which involved man-trap entry gates where personnel had to surrender all digital devices upon entry. Even worse, the toilet layout was visible for all to see on public planning documents, meaning that anyone could have figured out how to bypass security. He single-handedly gave new meaning to the term IP access. It's never too early in the week to start thinking about Super Cyber Friday from the CISO series. This week, our conversation will be all about hacking compliance, thinking about how to simplify and scale this complicated and often manual process. We'll dig into how to keep up with constant compliance changes, what parts of compliance seem to always get ahead of us, and if meeting compliance in one area can create a virtuous cycle for an organization. We just posted a preview video of the conversation over at CISOseries.com, so check it out and then register to join us this Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.